In a world where we're worn out, burnt out and unbalanced, I help leaders understand the power behind prioritizing joy. One minute, I was standing face to face with the Royals, named one of Australia's 50 greatest explorers, and the next minute, I was being cut from the wreckage of an aeroplane. He wants to be the first teenager to fly solo around the world. So I turned the aeroplane and started to, to fly east. 24,000 nautical miles, 35 stops, 15 countries. It held every emotion that a good expedition should, right? From boredom to sheer terror, uh, from pleasure to like genuine immense regret. But we did it. We broke a world record, youngest person and first teenager in history to have ever flown solo around the world. It was an incredible life, right? How could it not be? But all it did was leave me at a higher place to fall. And that's exactly what happened. I pushed the throttle forward and we took off. And that aeroplane lifted off the runway and the end of the runway disappeared beneath the nose. And then we had an engine fire and we lost power. And despite doing everything that I could in those next few seconds, what resulted was a really, really horrific plane crash. And I woke up sometime later in a uh, recovery ward and that's when I realised that I had no movement or feeling below my waist and I was diagnosed by the doctors as a complete paraplegic. But despite everything I went through with the success of the round the world flight as a normal Aussie kid or all the heartache and pain of the accident and recovery, I found my missing puzzle piece parked in my driveway. This is the worst financial decision <laughs> I've ever made in my life. Every time we drove it on the weekends, people would honk and scream from their moving vehicle as they'd go down the road. They'd wave. They'd stop us at a gas station. They'd ask for photos. They'd want to sit in the car. They'd ask questions. When was the car made? 1960. Do you work for Mary Kay? Do I look like I work for Mary Kay? <laughs> and then I looked up and I saw an old man. And that old man was standing there staring at that Cadillac and he was smiling. When I say smile, like, if this old man had a smile any harder, his ears would have touched behind his head, right? He was full of joy. The solution is to find a way to step back, to rest, to recharge, to show up better in the face of all your unavoidable challenges. The answer is to prioritize joy. By bringing the lesson that was parked in my driveway to your event, by asking what's your pink Cadillac, by creating a post-it note wall full of the things that make your people smile like a kid, by even having a real pink Cadillac on site, we create a moment. That question was, what's your pink Cadillac? What's the one thing you do for you that makes you smile like a kid? We asked tens of thousands of people and we have received tens of thousands of answers. My pink Cadillac is getting on my road bike and getting up in the hills by myself. I am obsessed with inflatable costumes. <laughs> pink Cadillac is horseback riding. My pink Cadillac is sitting on my front porch and watching my hummingbirds feed. Uh, just going out in the middle of a day, we've got a golf cart driving down Ocean Boulevard on a golf cart in the sun and letting the wind hit you in the face. I didn't think this was my pink Cadillac, but I, it actually is. It's performing open mic co stand-up comedy. I do a Madonna tribute, and when I'm on stage and I look out and I see the joy that the music brings to others, it fills me with joy. When we prioritize joy, mental health improves, performance increases, we create a culture that thrives, all by asking one simple question. 